Oh, good morning. Good morning, everybody out there in Facebook land. I figure I would do a video right now because my husband's sleeping. He doesn't get to sleep in very often. And so I figure I'll just let him sleep, of course. Um, I was up at five or so because my immune system makes me wake up and take care of it. And I have a great relationship with my immune system. And so we have been working together <laughs> very nicely. And my immune system has saved my ass plenty of times. And so, yeah, I'm lucky enough to get over that fire demon from having too much jello on top of releasing the demons from the alcohol on top of just potential instability in the atmosphere. But of course, when you have still some alcohol in your system, you may not feel the frequencies because the frequencies, well, your system, when you're under some kind of influence of something, even if it's not like you're not consciously feeling it, your body reacts to it and it lowers your blood pressure. Okay. And that's the thing about alcohol. That's the thing about things that are downers is that they lower your blood pressure. So then you don't get to condition yourself for the environment, for the environment when it changes. And so, yeah. Um, once I discovered the four alkalines or the, sorry, the four acids, that I was talking about a couple of years ago and I figured out how to put it into a context that makes sense, then I get why you have to balance out both the acids and the alkalines. And if you want to be bigger because of your environment, because of your job, you need more of the acids with a little bit of alkaline to kind of offset it. But when you're in, in areas where you don't want to be bigger because of social mores and social constructs, then you'll be more alkaline versus acid, but then you won't have the substance to deal with energy conversion. And that's the issue with social constructs, with trying to look like somebody's image of perfection. And you see that on OnlyFans, you see it all over the influencers or on YouTube, you see it all over Facebook, people trying to look like an image of a person who is highly alkaline and not enough acid, and then they don't survive climate change because they bought into those social constructs. And so I kicked away all those social constructs and said, fuck it, I want to survive. I'm not trying to be somebody's plaything. I'm not trying to produce an image. I'm not working off my body and my looks in order to get by. That was my 20s and potentially even my 30s and maybe around my 40s. But when that programming starts to wear off and break down, then there's a whole lot of fucking suffering. And when you're in a moderate climate, let's just say, for instance, it's like Calif ex example, like California, you can get away with being hardly anything to you. You can get away with doing all the yoga. You can get away with only eating leafy greens and be all alkaline and no acid. And you would still be able to somewhat survive relatively okay. But when the fucking climate changes, you can't afford to be all alkaline. Now you got to have some acid to you. And you need the meat, the milk, the cheesy eggs, the processed food the gluten, the sugar, the salt. And so, yeah, I mean, after I figured out that I messed with my biochemistry because of all that jello on top of releasing the alcohol demons, I fucked up my system. And now I have to get it back into balance again. And I did because the acid was still producing. And then I figured out, oh God, you know, that's what's missing. It's a freaking alkaline. It's the cabbage. And so cabbage has always served me well whether it was in the jelly juice as a fermentation or whether it's um, balancing out the acids in my body, cabbage has been the crux of it all. And of course, the salt, the electrolytes, and of course, my methodology of releasing demons, which was the evolution of the whole protocol when I finally came out with what I've been doing the last seven years. I wasn't completely keeping it under wraps in the beginning because I was telling people what I was doing. I didn't keep it to myself, but so much backlash around it that I finally just said, okay, I'm not going to say any more about what I'm actually doing to release the demons without doing J-Juice. And it wasn't even the milk at the time because I didn't discover milk and cream since like maybe since the last six months, year. And so finally, that methodology of releasing demons without developing more demons 
is now the major foundation, along with eating foods and balancing out your alkaline and your acids. And so some part of me still has residual issues with California. And you're going to see it. I mean, obviously, when I did the whole Dr. Phil show, it was in fucking Hollywood. Okay. The, the epicenter of all the programming and all of the, the developing the, of the intolerance, the mocking, the bullying. And i tell you, California is not as tolerant as they claim to be. Okay. And so when you realize that that attitude has also permeated every other part of the country, whether it's here in Ohio, that attitude of intolerance is here in Ohio. It's all over the fucking world. That's the epicenter of the social engineering, biophysical engineering, societal engineering, same thing as social, um, infrastructure, technological engineering. And then you see that every single thing that you have ever thought of, joined, and thought was like, great, it's been a programming into you, a programming that people don't even recognize because they think that's just the way life is. Yeah, when you're in someone's body who has to deal with the life world and the way they have to deal with it, it's the way life is for them at that point. But then they don't realize that you don't have to, it doesn't have to be that way. But why would they want anything other than what they have? Because when the suffering is fucking insane and when they can't get ahead and they're stopped by so many different roadblocks. And then they are facing something aggressive that could be deadly. But people don't feel it because they're under the influence. But when you start feeling the pain and the pain has surpassed all the cures. That's when you have to then realize that it doesn't have to be that way. But you're going to have to face the music. And so my life is an example of what climate change does to people. And when you are under the influence or you're more robust than not, then you don't really see it for what it is. Climate change to you could be a little cold. It could be a little sniffle. It could be a headache here and there, or it could be arthritis every single time the wind changes. But that's basically climate change. Sickness comes from climate change. And so back for the last, like, when did I first experience the PMDD? It was in 1999. And I was young. That was only a few years after what I would have originally graduated from high school. Okay? 1999 was when I experienced aggressive climate change in my body that would then be so susceptible to the environment and the changes of the season, not only just spring allergy season, which was something that I was plagued with as a child, then also cold and flu season, and then anything else, exposure to microbes. And so how that manifested me was a, was a, a gynecological or reproductive type of release process. And so then all of the, the, the body's way of releasing was through the lower chakras, I guess you can call it that. And so I felt climate change every single fucking month, every month. And no, I didn't have a name for the fucking disease. Yeah, I didn't call it PMS. Oh, Jillian, you can't handle fucking PMS. I'm a woman. I'm going to work every day. I don't feel anything like that. What's wrong with you? Are you lazy? Are you stupid? I mean, that's the eyes. When people look at you, it's like, oh yeah, I changed jobs. I did this because of whatever. And they're looking at you like you're fucking crazy. Oh, so I'll tell you, that's why I'm, I'm not saying I'm bitter about California. Maybe it comes off like that. But I remember every single time someone would look at me a different way because of the changes that I went through, having to go through those changes. Because if you're not under the influence or a really strong body, you got to deal with fucking shit. You got to deal with your, your immune system and it's not always easy. And so my coping mechanisms was eating because I'd be so ravenously hungry and sleeping and watching movies during that time. So I had something to distract me. And so, yeah, I'd be alone a lot more often than not. I'd be sitting in my little apartment by myself eating something I got from like some great place after work, looking forward to eating and sleeping and then waking up groggy and all this other stuff, having the poles flip where I'm sleeping all day and up all night. Oh my God. But that's what I had to fucking deal with or else but be under the influence of a drug, whether it's prescription drug or illicit drugs that were so prevalent at the time. 
So California, remember how mess, how the weather messed me up the last three years here in Ohio? And I had it all over Facebook. You guys saw what I went through. A storm would come through. Heart would beat faster, more mucus, fatigue, maybe some headaches. The frequencies is, is during a storm is going to wake up your immune system. And so right now with this approaching hurricane, people are feeling it. I even see some people on my Facebook with kids and their kids are going to the hospital because they're feeling their immune system move. They're feeling the pain. The body is trying to release. These kids have genetic anomalies. They have specific damages from that was inherited from their parents. That the body is trying to push out. That's your immune system. That's what was going on with me every single fucking month. Is the headaches, the fatigue, the hunger to feed the body while it's going through that energy conversion so I don't fucking die from having to go through the PMDD every month. That was a survival mechanism is eating and sleeping during those times. And so now during this time with this hurricane, slowly and methodically approaching the southern part of the U.S. or the southern part of California and ending up going, cutting right through California all the way up to actually the southern, the southeastern border of Oregon. That rain and those and those winds and everything else is going to wake up people's immune systems. And children are going to be affected. The elderly are going to be affected. The immunocompromised are going to be affected. And they're going to feel their immune system moving, trying to push out the damage in their body. That's weather underground. That's the weather wars that are going on. That's fucking climate change. So it's not only the floods you have to watch out for. It's the barometer dropping. When the pressure drops, it messes with your infrastructure in your body and in your community. What you're dealing with is what we had to deal with continuously when the storms came through here in Ohio. But since Californians are not used to that, they're going to be facing so much fucking crap. And when you have circulatory issues, cardiac issues, brain issues, cancer, disease, chronic illness, not immune disorders, all of that's going to fucking wake up and you're going to be dealing with some cytokine storms. Gone are the days where you can only blame the public therapies because it's the fucking climate. It is the particle acceleration. It is the barometer dropping. It's the pressure dropping. And it's the accelerated atmosphere that's going to wake up people's immune system. Though they will have a place to go. Oh, let's blame all the public health therapies. Let's blame someone who wasn't BED. B-A-C-C-I-N-A-T-E-D. See, all the pro-V people are like blaming the anti-V people and all the anti-V people are blaming the pro-V people, but really that's the fucking weather that's fucking with both of them. But they were given convenient arguments to go and lay the blame so they never have to take responsibility because they were never given that opportunity to take fucking personal biophysical responsibility for their health and wellness. They <laughs> were in a place called California that is all about having affordable health care access to drugs, access to surgeries, access to medicine, almost even like competing with or, yeah, almost as if they were channeling Canada, which right now is going through their own bullshit. Their healthcare industry is fucked right now. People are waiting years to get the surgeries they think are going to help them. They're waiting weeks and weeks and weeks for getting diagnoses. And so the universal health care is a freaking curse to everyone because when you have easy access to health care, you'll be so conditioned not to deal with climate change because you'll have a surgery, you'll have a drug, you'll have a therapy so you don't feel shit, so you don't condition yourself to deal with releasing and taking on the substance. And then you can maintain your yoga fucking shit. You can maintain your vegan and vegetarian bullshit. You can maintain all of your politics around your body until the fucking weather comes in and fucks people up. And that's exactly what's going on. California was set up to fucking fail. They didn't realize climate change was going to be this aggressive. Oh, they will now. <sighs> people went to California to escape crazy weather. They wanted moderate temperatures, moderate climate change. Now the weather is coming to them. The system is going to force change, evolution on people who are not prepared for it. They were warned, global warming is here, but it's not just the warming of the planet. I mean, that's part of it, yes, and you'll get aggressively cold too, because we might be like a day after tomorrow where it's gonna be a deep freeze. And I'm expecting that this winter. We have firewood, but I'm expecting 
major deep freeze for our winter as we have dealt with such aggressive heat and storms in the summer. And so it's going to be very extreme on either end, the cold and the heat and all the different storms. But I've been conditioned to deal with it. It's the aggressive storms. People do not anticipate how storms can be very destructive to people's immune systems. Not only the flooding, but people with all types of conditions are going to get aggravated assuming they survive. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, you will or you are right now. And again, these poor kids who are not prepared to deal with this aggressive weather, and they're in California raised on bodies that didn't have to deal with too much climate change because the parents have been in California during those moderate temperatures, whether it's Southern California or Northern California, for generations. Okay? So when you're in Southern California and it's always summer there, just like I said, when it's always summer, you're not dealing with too much change, so you can go and develop the agenda. Nothing's really going to mess with you too much. And they'll have the medications and the hospital system and all the different therapies to keep you relatively cured so you can go to your job and carry out the agenda. But when they don't need you anymore, when they don't need that kind of workforce anymore, we don't need that kind of influencers who are selling you everything under the fucking sun, then they're, how they're going to clean up the streets and clean up the whole freaking world? They're going to change the goddamn weather on you and force evolution on you and you are not even fucking prepared for it. Because as that storm approaches, you're going to feel everything in your body. Children are going to be feel aggressive things waking up in their body. Animals as well. My animal dealt with the fucking climate change. We tried to save her, but it was so aggressive the last couple of years. So fucking aggressive. And if I would have treated her, then she would have blown up like a fucking balloon and still would have felt miserable in a big body, lumbering around, trying to eat the grass so she can settle down the acids in her stomach. I already knew what, I, what, what, what would happen if I would have treated my animal for all the different things that she had. Oh, I already knew what was going to happen. Either she wouldn't survive it or she'd be suffering even more. And the pain is going to be horrendous. When the body's trying to push out damage, everyone is going to be in pain. And the more you resist the pain, it will persist until you cure yourself out of existence. And that's exactly what the system anticipates. When you can't handle the pain anymore, you will get the most strongest drugs that are FDA approved and you will continuously take them. As the body keeps trying to push out, you will stop the body from pushing the damage out and the demons and those demons will ravage you from the inside. That's exactly what's going on right now. That's exactly the healthcare system. That's exactly the holistic fucking world. And so particle acceleration is storms. Or hurricanes, tornadoes, and aggressive heat as the temperature rises. Aggressive humidity. And then when it falls, oh, that's even worse because you're dealing now with major aggressive fluctuations, swings in the pressure in the air. And that pressure, low pressure, high pressure, when it swings to that extreme, you feel it everywhere. Cytokine storms, also known as immunological storms, are triggered by various aggressive weather events. The aggressive extreme swings in the pressure, in the barometer. The particle, this particle acceleration is fucking people up. Now you'll understand what we have felt over here in Ohio, the Northeast. I'm so glad I acclimated to this weather change back in 2010. And I am thankful I released my demons the last seven years. When I first came to Ohio, I had a major respiratory condition. I didn't use medication at the time because, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm in Ohio I just figured I'd just cough it out. And I did. But I had the most horrendous cough. A cough that would put me in a fetal position. Because I did pull a muscle. And I would say, oh my God, my stitch. Because it felt like I had a stitch, like a cramp. And after you run. And I would be coughing in a fetal position. Because I did damage something. Somewhere. <laughs> because my body was not used to having to work that hard. That's why I'm saying you got to cough and sneeze and blow your nose and condition your internal system to release the demons or else you will get a, such an aggressive disease in your body, infection. The body is desperate to push out. And when you when your body is forced to push out those little fucking demons, you could actually injure yourself trying to all of a sudden let your immune system work for you. And then those, the walls and your lungs and all the different parts your body trying to release will get damaged in the process because you did not condition yourself to release. You've always went to the medical system to atrophy your ability to release. And that's the depopulation agenda. That's the medical holistic system. 
And so, so I coughed that would put me in a fetal position because I pulled a muscle in my chest. When I went to Florida for the first time after that, I became sick again because I wasn't, it was another climate change. And it did not mean I wasn't healthy. It meant that my body was used to changing. And it had to go through those sicknesses. Okay? Because I had that PMDD every fucking month for the last 30 years. I became used to it every single time the climate changed in California. And it was always around my menses with respiratory conditions twice a year. Respiratory conditions twice a year. Every single time my body got sick, I had to keep pushing out the demons. And then I'd take on more demons because you don't know any better, right? But during those times, I would stay home. I would eat. I would rest. I would sleep. I would watch movies. And yes, I did miss a lot of family events that I was invited to. And people thought I was lazy. They thought they made so many judgments about me. No, I'm just trying to survive my own immune system. I didn't have the luxury to have the chronic immune system that is plastered all over John Hopkins where you get treated for. I didn't have the luxury to have a diagnosis. Oh, yeah, I went to Kaiser. I asked them, what can I do for my PMS or PMDD? They're like, oh, yeah, go see um, a, a nurse. And here, here's Prozac. That was being prescribed at the time was Prozac. Okay? So you really think the medical holistic system has any fucking intention to help you actually stay alive? No, they want to zombify you. They want to put you under the influence. They want to drug you. Well, after maybe taking a few of those pills and I felt like a zombie, I said, nope, ain't going there. And I had birth control. Oh, yeah, the Yaz and any other birth control that was out there. But because they said, oh, yeah, it's just a moderate, moderate, or it's just to regulate your PMS, allegedly. It never fucking worked. Oh, but stay away from coffee. Stay away from this food. Stay away from that food. Then it's a starvation game. Don't eat this. Don't eat that. <laughs> so when, you, when that's what's, that's your only option is either starve yourself or be on drugs. <sighs> you know what? Fuck all you. I'm going to go and just deal with it. I'll be so amazing for two weeks out of the month. And then two weeks, I'll be pulling myself out of the fucking hole. But I'll be eating and sleeping and being lazy, according to those who are under the influence and able to have that luxury of a diagnosable condition that everybody can feel sorry for them about. But oh no, Jillian's fucking lazy. Jillian's stupid. Jillian is, is she, she's, oh God, oh my God. So no, I'm just trying to survive my immune system and the fucking world out there. But of course, when people are under the influence, they don't fucking understand. Oh no. <laughs> That's why I wasn't like all of you under the influence and on prescription drugs so I can go to work every single fucking day. I found a way to survive. Even though you thought I was fucking lazy, a loser, Little did I know I was conditioning myself for this time right now. And I had the fuck and I had to fucking survive by all means necessary. And I had to strategize my survival. And it was a fight. Okay? Because nowhere where you, you can go, you couldn't go anywhere without somebody making a judgment about you wanting to sleep, you having PMS, you having some kind of condition that wasn't really diagnosable and it wasn't even known at the time. It was just something that people thought it was all in my fucking head. They just thought I was mentally ill. That's how they wanted to characterize me. And they treated me as such. And then I had to react from that and become defensive. Fuck yeah. It's a survival goddamn mechanism. And no, I wasn't going to do fucking drugs. And I wasn't going to become an alcoholic either. Climate change makes you sick. Extremely sick. That's why when people fly on planes going from one climate to another, they get sick every time they come home. People think you're crazy until it starts happening to them. Today, I feel great. <laughs> okay. Right now, <clears throat> no major heartbeats. <clears throat> Excuse me. The last few days or so, I felt a little bit of heat every so often. Hold on. <laughs> but nothing like the last three days, last three years. I also conquered that fire demon, okay, that I brought on on my own. After eating the cabbage yesterday and my body released very urgently, I'm telling you, yesterday I ate some cabbage after all that. That's that funny story that I, that I wrote in there. Right then, as I was eating the cabbage, I figured I had to fart. Oh, no, it wasn't a fart. It was the body releasing that freaking fire demon. And it was yellow. That's what I'm saying. That yellow bile, that choleric adjective, the irritation, that's what the yellow that's in your poop. When you have so much internal irritation, and when you don't release that internal irritation, and you medicate it so you don't feel it, 
then people's personalities change and they become bitter. They become angry. They become bitter. They become vindictive. And then they're out bullying everybody. That's what the drugs have done to people when they can't release that choleric bile in their intestines. Because everything gets run through the liver. And when you have irritation like that heartburn that I had that I and also whatever alcohol I drank, the three shots from Saturday, I had that bile, that yellow irritated, and that cabbage activated my immune system. Not only did it calm down the the heartburn, but it forced my body to release that fucking fire demon. But that thing that I released, that yellow fire demon that I released is actually running people right now who don't want to release the demons out of their body. They're too afraid because they don't want to feel the energy of release. They're so afraid and they've been told to be afraid by their doctors, by their homeopathics, by their naturopathics, by their holistic friends, by their herbalists. They're like, yeah, I want you to go and anesthetize yourself so you don't feel shit. And when that shit's running you and you don't know where it comes from, yeah, because you were supposed to release, but you kept taking a medication. You kept using jelly juice. Even the, even the salt water that I used to try to calm down the heartburn the last couple of days didn't fucking work. It was when I ate the salad, it made things a little bit better, and then I released the demons. But there was still some residual shit, that stuff that was that fire demon that's still in my body. And of course, I wanted to check and see if I could eat that jello again and see what it Maybe I could eat the jello now, but I'm not going to risk it. I threw away the jello. Because I still had residual shit, residual fire demon in my, in my body. But yesterday when I was burping, and you saw I was burping, I had the, the cream of wheat, which, okay. Why would that aggravate heartburn? Because you still had a demon within. But then after that transmission, and I got my groceries delivered to me, and I purposely put in purple cabbage on my list, it released the demons. So I'm telling you, eat the cabbage, people. It doesn't have to be the fermented cabbage with the salt. Eat raw cabbage along with all of your other foods. And yeah, you're going to have to fucking shit out the demons. And you might have to cough it out. When I'm throwing up all this heartburn acid out of my mouth that was one of the fights and shitting it out and then using the cabbage as well it's a highly intensive alkaloid alkaline and it's yeah it's nature but then after you release that demon you never want to be there be there again but if you're continuously taking cabbage for your heartburn it means you haven't done enough to release the demons you still have those demons out there and so you have to keep shitting that's why i say keep pulling out the fucking demon Keep eating the cabbage if heartburn is your issue. Keep eating the cabbage and keep shitting it out. Drink the milk, cream, eat the meat, the cheese, the eggs, the fruits and vegetables. And understand acid, when you're heavier set like I am right now, I'm not, I'm not heavier set relative to other people. Heavier relative to other people. But I have a lot more acid, but it's the acid is good because it's giving me the substance. But if I throw off my biochemistry... Then I have to bring in, and I feel stuff, then I got to bring in the alkaline. But I'm not telling you to do the supplements. Eat, eat a fucking, eat a cabbage salad. But see, people who are so slight, who are too alkaline, and they're feeling stuff. Yeah, eating more cabbage, more alkaline is going to make you even more skinnier and less adaptable. At some point, you have to bring on the weight. At some point, you're going to have to feed your body the actual fatty acid, amino acids. And obviously the vitamins or pro-hormones and minerals, the electrolytes. And so I also conquered that fire demon in my body after eating that cabbage yesterday. And my body released very urgently. It released that yellow choleric humor of irritation. And I feel amazing. Like I just conquered the goddamn world. Cabbage is amazing. So is meat, milk, cheese, eggs, and gluten, sugar, and salt, and all of that. And processed fucking food. Everything is a chemical. People are like, oh my God, processed food has chemicals. Well, water is a chemical. Mine is all, people think of fluoride as poison. Water is a chemical. It's H2O. That's a fucking chemical. So you're saying not to eat, not to drink water because water is a chemical? See, you're buying into all the fucking marketing in the holistic world. And you're starving yourself in the meantime when you're buying into that bullshit because you don't understand physics, chemistry. You don't understand the, the elements on the periodic table. You don't even understand biochemistry because you're told to listen to the professionals who have some fucking pill and procedure and of course a lifestyle to sell you but hey you know if 
being if starving and looking hot and looking like you're about to go fuck somebody right off the bat is how you're going to survive then that's how you've been programmed to be somebody's plaything to be someone's desire not for survival you're just somebody's plaything until then you can't survive the environment that's how these women and girls who are like gen z gen y millennials have been programmed to be to be unadaptable and to be somebody's fucking plaything that's how women have been fucked in this world so currently it's 55 degrees over here in ohio we're getting a break it's short-lived and i will enjoy it for however long we get it but it seems all the energy is going towards the left side of the united states and many people in california are not prepared it's not just preparing for the floods your bodies are going to go through some bullshit during this time and you thought it was only the public health therapies people are going to find out very quick blaming just the public therapies for people's conditions was very intentional as a distraction from those starting those campaigns so when they are ramping up the weather and ramping up the climate change and then you have a place to go to blame the food the gmo the processed food blame the v's you're not going to understand that no matter what you do or do not do, it's not going to matter when the climate fucking changes and it wakes up Pandora's box in your immune system. It's not going to fucking matter whether someone gets a V or doesn't get a V, whether someone eats GMO or doesn't eat GMO or someone eats gluten or gluten free. It's not going to fucking matter what you do, whatever campaign that was given to you the last 10, 15 years. It's not going to fucking matter when the climate comes to you and you ain't prepared to deal with it. And so maybe they'll figure out, maybe it was a tactic to distract you. Things don't become accelerated and activated really until the environment changes. Once the environment changes aggressively, everything gets activated. People get activated with their intentions. The immune system activates with its intention. Then you get fucking chaos. Imagine living in areas so poorly and then chaos. People take advantage of chaos. I keep telling you it's the fucking weather and particle acceleration that is waking up people's immune systems. The elderly and the children are going to be the most affected and those with diagnosable conditions. And I said, take care of California because you're going to fucking need it. You're going to need all the luck in the world and potentially even strategy. Welcome to the world you Californians developed in the 1960s. Welcome to the weather underground. Climate change is weather wars. Bob Dylan, R.E.M. warned you. It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine, okay? Because the times, they are changing. Because the winners will become losers, and the losers will become winners. The times, they are a changing. So, while you guys are all suffering out there in California, and you're highly religious, nobody's going to save you but you. Jesus is not going to save you. Moses is not going to save you. The hospital system ain't going to fucking save you. The police can't fucking save you. Your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your friends, and your family, your religion ain't going to fucking save you. Only you are going to save you. But, you, you know, when you think about what happened in California in the 1960s and the cult revolution and the whole Charles Manson was to program you to rely on somebody else and to demonize somebody else and get you in your small homogenized groups that you think are so safe. And then when you try to change and evolve, everyone says, no, you can't fucking evolve. You can't believe this. You can't believe that. She's an outsider. He's an outsider. And so then they all go over the fucking cliff together because they all refuse to fucking change. And they think they're free. <laughs> and so now you see what the FEMA coffins found in Georgia were for. Right alongside the Georgia Guidestones. Mass casualty event. And so the J-World is a great reset of the body. And this great reset via Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum is the great reset of humanity. And you're seeing all the fires everywhere. I mean, in Canada, you're seeing it. Spain, Greece, Australia had them. They might get them again. And of course, everyone knows California wildfires. And then you have things that happen in Maui, Hawaii. You think it's all a fucking coincidence? If you think it's a coincidence or you think it's God going, okay, this is the rapture, <sighs> stay in your story because you can't, you won't be able to handle the actual truth, the reality. You won't be able to handle the reality. Your whole world of what you thought it was, was completely, I won't say it's a lie, but it was a fairy tale. <laughs> uh. 
So some of us were trained to bring in evolution, like myself, and others were trained into resisting evolution. Look around you. I hope you all choose well for you. I can't tell you to embrace evolution if you've been taught to resist it. I can't tell you to do that. Those that who, who are relatively evolutionary can understand where I'm coming from. Those who were trained to resist evolution, you won't fucking get it. And you will blame everyone under the sun for why you can't survive climate change or why climate change is kicking your ass. And remember Michael Moore was such a fan of universal healthcare in the, in the 90s, 2000s? Maybe not so much anymore because Canada, they're not getting the care that they need. They don't have family practitioners anymore. They have to wait weeks and weeks and weeks and years and years for tests and test results and even the surgeries they think are going to save them. And now you're seeing an exodus out of some of these towns in the middle of nowhere, 20,000 people town that are having to be moved into larger cities. And when they come back to their home, is it going to be there? And so, yeah, you're seeing now people forced to move a mass exodus from where they were living, leaving behind animals, leaving behind expensive art, leaving behind heirlooms, leaving behind their gardens. If you can't handle not having anything and you have to guard your shit because you spent so much money invested in all these baubles, wow, then you will sacrifice yourself for your stuff. And so rice vinegar and sesame oil, raw cabbage salad, balances the acids and the alkalines. So I made an enchilada full of acid, yes, and then I used the cabbage salad as the alkaline. That's why they have salads around meals. That's why they have some kind of vegetable with your meal, but unless you actually understand what that salad and what that alkaline vegetable actually does, you'll just think it's just something that your parents tell you, oh, eat your vegetables. Well, yeah, eat your vegetables, but also eat your meat and your milk and your cheese and your eggs. Eat all the acids, the fatty acids, amino acids, and pro-hormones. And then you get your alkaline and your minerals also from the cabbage. Now, I don't mess around too much with broccoli. I don't do a lot of cauliflower. I don't play with cucumbers all the time. You know, I'm not. this is not a fad. Growing vegetables and having vegetables is not a fad. Okay? Cabbage is the most surefire alkaloid vegetable that's very inexpensive and it makes up for all the other vegetables out there and that's what I used to balance out my system the last couple of days it was the fucking cabbage and I didn't have to go bring in you know cucumbers and zucchinis and all this stuff because then you're focusing on so much of the vegetable it's hardly any of the acids and people are like oh I'm gonna become a vegetarian okay <laughs> sure <laughs> All right, so I'm going to see what Audrey said real quick. Oh, hold on. Same here with universal health care. It was set up. Created dependency. All right, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. That's why I'm glad I didn't have... That's why my husband and I don't have health insurance right now. We do not have health insurance. And so... You know, my husband knows that when he has to shit, he'll fucking shit. If he feels pain, he'll do the best he can not to treat it. Okay. So if we get into an accident in a car, we have car insurance. If it's our fault, we have medical payments. If it's somebody else's fault, we'll sue for paying for any kind of care that we need. Okay. So that's the thing. And if, if someone doesn't have insurance, then we'll sue for our own uninsured motorist type of thing to take care of anything medical, such as pulling a bumper out of my ass. All right? And so, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna be dependent on the medical system to atrophy my body's ability to release. I'm not gonna be dependent on remedies and herbs and extracts and detoxes and even the J-juice. I don't even use the J-juice anymore. It has evolved to the point where you don't even need it, but those of you who are just starting this world of the J world, it might help you release some of those demons, but that's not the end. And so what leafy greens are alkaline? Most lists, most lists of all alkaline foods start with the many vegetables that are high in alkaline, such as kelp. That's why I see a lot of the, the people who are 
African American or black selling kelp type of concoction because a lot of the cultures that are very robust, highly acidic, yes, and they have heartburn and high blood pressure and all that stuff. And so they use the kelp and the kale, like the mustard greens and all of that, and the collard greens that are in the southern food to calm down the acids because their body is so robust. Okay, that's why they're selling that. But you can't manage that with just that. You have to release those demons. Okay, and, and so people are selling these concoctions all over the internet trying to help people relieve the pain. It's just temporary. If you keep having to take kelp dosages when you're just eating solid and you're eating your food then you are balancing out your biochemistry once you release all those demons but if you still have demons within you it's not gonna matter if you're eating a nice balanced salad and and meat milk and cheese and eggs because you still have residual shit inside your body that the the the, the acids and the alkaline are going to trigger your immune system to release and it's going to be painful that's why people have food intolerances and so, um, and so, yeah, mustard greens, cucumber, spinach, broccoli, and I have spinach actually in my bottom drawer, sprouts, grasses, and parsley, avocado, celery, gr spring greens, green beans, lettuce, and arugula are other good choices, though they are only moderate in alkaline. So I'm saying cabbage is surefire. You have stomach issues and you need to shit. Yeah, you can drink milk, but eat a, eat a bunch of raw cabbage. Oh yeah, you'll be in that bathroom and you'll need to be in that bathroom. It's not just a J juice. That'll make you shit and release the demons. It's something like raw cabbage. Funny story. I was burping up. Oh, yeah, I read that. Okay, the yellow bile and stuff. And so to survive, you must not only be your own scientist, but your own manager. You must experience it all to understand remotely where I'm coming from. Or else it's all a belief system. Or you're worshiping something or you're demonizing something. And so that's why I can't, I couldn't tell people. I couldn't prove to people indefinite life. I couldn't prove to people what the whole J world is because you have to experience what it's like to be highly acidic and you're feeling the heartburn come up and you feel the pain and you realize you have to release not only release those demons, but also eat something highly alkaline like cabbage. Not something that's all the remedies out there, but eat food. And I'm not saying use food as medicine, but food is supposed to help you release and also help you retain. The acids keep the substance and the alkalines or yeah, the alkaline is what is what regulates the acid. And then you have so much damage to release. And so then all these politics about patriotism and freedom and all this shit, free will equals evolution. If you're not evolving, not only do you not have free will, but you are comfortable in your enslavement. And so look at all your Facebook people who are not evolving. Maybe they claim to be creationists. They don't want to ever change. They want to blame or worship somebody. And so if you really desire freedom, you would change your lifestyle, your belief system, and you would stop blaming everyone and everything, and you would stop worshiping everyone and everything. To actually be free, not like patriotic American free of perception or freedom, but to actually be free, you would have, to, you would have the ability to change, and your friends and family would not try to destroy it and frown on it. You wouldn't be afraid of what people would think. See, that's freedom. When you can say, okay, I believed in Jesus Christ today, but now I'm like, well, maybe I might question that because maybe he was just someone that people liked and didn't like, and then was used as, a, a, you know, a person who's Christian, who's able to question their own Christianity. That's evolution. That's freedom. When you can question every single belief system you hold, whether you took it on yesterday or you took it on tomorrow or you took it on 50 years ago with all your family, if you can question your own belief system, that's fucking freedom. But to actually be free, you'd have the ability to change, okay? And so when you're too invested in people, ple into, in people pleasing, and I'm not talking about your job, you have to people, please people in your job. You're not looking for freedom. You're looking for another enslavement quarters. Please don't talk about freedom unless you can change the way you look at things. You like being enslaved. When the government gives you activist stances so you feel relevant, you are a slave. When you're so busy worshiping or hating or a politician who you don't even know personally because you've been given arguments to resist le legislation. So when someone is now demonizing, they used to revere Trump. Now they're demonizing Trump 
because he allowed somebody to put some legislation into something about the V's. Okay. 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 You're a fucking slave. No one's forcing you to do anything, but you have taken upon yourself to fight a perceived fight for somebody else. When you make a choice to get a V or not to get a V, that's where the whole argument ends. You made a choice for yourself. But what do people do? They then go further and try to make choices for other people doing exactly what they think the government is doing to them when the government has not forced you to get a V or do anything against your will. Yeah, if, you, if you're in a job that says, okay, you're required to get a public health therapy, that's not the government. That's the job requiring that. And so you choose to work at a job that requires you to do something or not do something. All right? But that's the thing is, is it's ironic that those that claim the government is forcing them to do stuff when the government has not forced you to do anything, they never walked into your house and forced anything on you. It's your friends and family that are doing that, but not the fucking government. And then you go and hate somebody like me or anyone else and make a choice for somebody else, whether or not they get a V or not get a V. You are ex acting exactly what you think the government is doing to you. And the government ain't doing shit to you. That's the irony and that is the deception. That is the brainwashing of the activist community. And it was developed a long time ago and people bought into it. But you, have t but you have taken upon yourself to fight a perceived fight for somebody else because you already decided you know what's good for you and other people. So then what are you fighting against when you already made that personal conscious choice for you? Oh, you want to control somebody else. Ironic when you think the government is controlling you and then they have given you all the free will to choose. Now you want to control somebody else's choices. And slaves not only hate people, but they also love them and worship them. All right, what the hell are people saying here? You need to get your alkaline and your minerals. Oh. Okay. Oh, Lordy. Okay. All right, that's fine. They're coming on something else. You never know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We all know it's by design. We all know, Jeff. <laughs> Believe me, I know. So that's slavery. That was done 6,000 years ago. And it's done again today. When you keep repeating the same bullshit you see all over Facebook, and you have nothing new to offer to the world, you are very comfortable in your enslavement. It takes maturity and responsibility to actually be free and to be accountable for your choices. It takes an actual adult who is willing to take personal responsibility to finally discover what freedom really means. When you're not trying to convert someone in your politics, in your religion, and in your science dogmas, you are free. What somebody else does has, when somebody else has bearing of what to do, how you feel, your worth, you're enslaved. That's activism. And so when, when, when somebody else does something, that really has no bearing on what you do, but it, you feel it has bearing. You feel that what that person does over there, where they get a V or don't get a V, you're now making that person's situation relevant to you, making that person's situation as if it was an affront against your belief system <laughs> and your worth. You are enslaved when you think somebody else's decisions affect you. If they are robbing your fucking house, if they are doing things to you, yeah, their decisions are affecting you. You call the goddamn police and defend yourself. But because someone takes an operation or they take a V or don't take a V or they believe in whatever the fuck they believe in, it has no bearing on you. Let them fucking live their life and deal with the consequences of their choices just like you are. But you're not. You're blaming and you're trying to control somebody else. If you are predominantly angry, melancholic, melancholic, love, 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 and happy all the time, you are enslaved. Someone told you you were not allowed to be angry or melancholic, and so you became under the influence so you can be what someone else wants you to be. All fucking happy all the fucking time. All I'm saying, I'm not always happy. It doesn't mean I'm sad. It doesn't even mean I'm always angry. Oh, I'm looking at the reality of this stuff, and it that's why I'm like, fuck. That's enslavement. You're not free. And you literally have no free will. You won't let you have the freedom. Your family and friends won't give you that freedom. 
and your body will punish you for enslaving it and resisting its freedom to release. That's abusing your body, your mind, and your spirit. When you finally free yourself, you will give your body the freedom to live and thrive, or you die because the body can't be abused anymore. <clears throat> when you can say, my life is not predicated on what someone else does with their body, mind, and spirit, but I will develop a great argument for why my beliefs are so, and I will let law enforcement handle those who are out of control. That, to me, is freedom. There's no reason to rise up. You hunker down because the system is cleaning up the streets. And so when you rise up, your head's going to get chopped off. Oh, I rose up, and my head was getting sliced by everybody. But then I could still rise up and avoid the machetes that are out there. And they're all out there because everyone is holding all the choleric humor of irritation and vindictiveness and anger. Oh, here we go. You're hearing a little bit of anger come out of me, but I'm not as angry as I was. But I mean, I still have residual because what's going on in California, there are people in Southern California that I know that I'm related to that are going to be hit by this. And no, I don't talk to them. They're going to have to deal with their insurance company. They're going to have to deal with their, with their neighborhood that they all join together and help each other. That's what's going to happen. I can't save anyone in Southern California. I can't save anyone that I know in Southern California. They're going to have to save, save themselves. But I am still affected by it because I know what they're going to be going through. I've been watching it, okay, in different places of the world. And I know even what could potentially even happen here. But I'm ready for it. The people in Southern California are not fucking ready for it. That's why I'm like kind of coming out a little bit irritated because I know what they're going to be dealing with. I got to freaking go to the restroom. Hold on. And so people think you're stupid until they find out you're right. It's always the intolerant ones that reject information and then whine and say they were never warned. They've been telling you about climate change for years. <laughs> they weren't going to tell you how it was going to happen, but they were telling you about climate change for many years. Nothing like the 11th hour to find out how right that crazy bitch was. And people thought and think I'm a crazy bitch until they are faced with fires, wind, rain, hail, and disease. Now we all get to watch Southern California suffer because they thought their climate change was intense heat. Everything will be unprecedented. Everything. Don't get comfortable because you think you're above other people. I'm not saying stay humble because I ain't trying to beg for anyone's energy, but save yourself. And maybe stop being so damn intolerant. Maybe stop being so fucking narrow. Maybe stop laughing at people who, who are different than you. Maybe fucking wake up. Maybe realize the story they fed you was just to keep you under control and somebody else's plaything, okay? <laughs> Maybe realize they've been starving you out for fucking centuries. Maybe it's time to fucking eat a hamburger. I hope you survive climate change, but now I get to say, fucking I told you so. I mean, you shouldn't feel joy in gloating, Jillian. Well, this is a lesson not only for me. This is a lesson about how we treat other people. This is a lesson that maybe when someone gives you new information or information that you have not heard before. Maybe it's okay to consider it. Maybe it's okay not to shit on evolution. Maybe it's okay that, that people are allowed to have their lifestyle and their belief systems. So as long as it's not encroaching upon you. And maybe your children need to be exposed to certain different lifestyles without it being inappropriate, like sexually inappropriate. But I'll tell you, we have been breeding so much intolerance in people and then there's no repercussions for that. Well, the system is developing repercussions for people's intolerances to adaptation, to change, and to new information. And so they can't force you to take on another belief system. They can't belief system. They can't force you to evolve and change the way you do things. 
but they can change your environment and make you make the choices on whether or not you want to survive with climate change or keep curing yourself to death and bringing on more trauma in the medical system. The system is giving you a choice in how you're going to deal with adaptation. And they've given you every latitude to do whatever the fuck you want. So as long as it's legal and you're not making claims and you're following, following the laws and rules and regulations of marketing. But even then, <laughs> you see all over Facebook, there's no regulation in the herbs market, in the remedies market. There's absolutely no regulation. And that was for a reason. Until you start making claims. But you're like, hey, <laughs> here I have this concoction of jalapenos and serrano peppers and apple cider vinegar and lemons and orange juice and ginger and celery. And here it's so spicy. It's going to freaking just kill everything. <laughs> well, kill all the disease in your body. As that person is deteriorating. These people who are selling you all their spicy concoctions and all their remedies. Not only are they aging out. But they are so alkaline that when the wind blows, they won't fucking survive it. When the body tries to release the demons, they won't survive that. Because those demons inside that were plaguing them were also keeping them alive. And torturing the fuck out of them. So, good luck everyone. But, again, the system is teaching all of us a lesson. Oh, I learned so many lessons the last seven years. And I learned them publicly. And I evolved. And now it's all your turn. And I hope you survive your evolution. Bye.